Well, greetings everyone. Uh, right now it is uh, the Sabbath, Seventh Day Sabbath, so I do want to welcome you in on the Sabbath with me and our King. Our Heavenly Father through His Righteous Son will be there as well. And I do want to discuss circumcision, basically. Uh, but first I got to get into, uh, you know, questioning. And this here is a site called Fury of Awesomeness. Uh, it shows the Beirut, Lebanon explosion, 14 different camera angles, footage of massive blast. And I'm only using this for educational purposes, but I have a question uh, to people like even my friend Harry Sit. And uh, by insider information to Harry Sit. You know, thanks for it, Harry. I believe September 27th is supposed to be the rapture again. And Harry, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, man, you know, but, uh, you know, Harry is a beautiful soul. I really like Harry. He says that when he gets to, and I'm paraphrasing over several different uh, comments that you made, Harry, but I kind of like combined it all together to come out that, and Harry loves me, man, because he says that when he's raptured, uh, him and the Jesus are going to get together and have a ham sub. And while they're eating and talking things over, uh, he's, Harry's going to point the Jesus out to me. Me, down here, man. You know? So... Jesus might rapture me out later, but, you know, of course, I'm wondering, Harry, you know, even with the date of September 27th, I mean, look at this area right here. It looks like a fire going on, but this was, you know, a bombing or whatever. Uh, it's a massive explosion. Now, people that live around this place, man, was there not one single one that praised the Jesus? You got to ask yourself this when we watch this. Here we go. Try just, you know, for educational purposes. Was there any there that believed in the Jesus? I mean, they should have been raptured by them because that's called tribulation, my friend. That's tribulation that's taking place all over the world. Not just, you know, that alone. You know, but also, you know, there's uh, fires that are everywhere. People are being flooded out. You know, I mean, there's just so much out there on the internet that you can see that the tribulation's already starting, you know, it's already here, my friend. You've got the black plague on us now. This is from Newsbreak here. New Mexico man dies from plague that's killed more than coronavirus. Look at this, man. This is, this is what takes place with the black plague. Okay. I just wanted to point that out to you. There's, uh, you know, plenty on here about the black plague being in several different countries and it just so occurs it's here in america so we've got the black plague to look forward to there's many others that are coming you've seen it i've showed it to you in scripture if you haven't read it on your own deuteronomy chapter 28 it'll explain so much to you about the things that are coming even boils and I say that because there was once that I, I chose to be like Yana or Jonah and uh, try to keep away from bringing the word as our king was leading me. And therefore, I did avoid speaking of boils because I hate them. You know? <laughs> They're nasty and disgusting. And so because I did put it off, our king gave me another boil. <laughs> you know, so... I will talk and say boil every now and then just to keep them from having to be a blessing to me to remember to not leave them out. But anyway, as I was here uh, just a little bit ago, I came across a couple comments and 
this is the reason why I'm needing to uh, basically bring out a bit about the circumcision. The 144,000 are all going to be circumcised. They probably most likely already are. Uh, as it goes with myself personally, I asked my mom right after I actually came to being called out. And I asked her, I says, Ma, I says, what day was I circumcised on? And the biggest smile came on her face, and she said, you know, there's a story behind that. And I said, well, what? Well, see, at first I have to realize that being born a cat lick, uh, they're usually circumcised, if they are at all, on the third or the fifth day. Uh, sometimes they'll be circumcised right as soon as they come out of the womb. You know, they get washed up and boom, they... They circumcise a the child, but the reason why the law says to have, you know, the males of those that believe and you're raising them in the truth, okay, you'll have your males circumcised on the eighth day. Now, research has shown that on the eighth day of a male's life, the highest levels he'll ever have of vitamin K take place. Look it up yourself, okay? So it is the safest day, the eighth day. And it's kind of funny how our Creator knew that, you know what I'm saying? To even say the eighth day. Now, of course, there's people that's going to come up against what I'm going to bring out on the circumcision because, well, Paul and la-da-da, and he went to the disciples and la-da-da. Well, it was the disciples they said, hey, look, give these non-believers, these Gentiles, give them first four of all the commandments because them four things they need to get rid of so they can get Holy Spirit. They shouldn't be eating blood. They shouldn't have sexual immorality. And they shouldn't eat things that were strangled nor offered to the idols. They shouldn't do these things. In that way, Holy Spirit can come into them, where they can go out to the synagogues in every city, wherever they're at, go into those synagogues, they'll be welcomed there, and they can hear the law of Moshe being read every Sabbath in the synagogues. So it wasn't no just quickly get weenie whacked boom, you know, with uh, what some were trying to teach. But I'm going to show you from other teachings other than that. Those teachings came from what I'm going to reflect on here in Ezekiel. And it's going to be for a time that is yet to even come. So please stick with me as we go through this. But I've got to divert just a little bit because we have this question from Light Exposes Darkness commented. And it said, are you literally speaking of actual circumcision? I sure hope not. That's falling from grace. <laughs> you know? And I was going to point out to this individual, you know, that uh, who grace is, because I just recently made a video. It's Zeus had three daughters. They were all referred to as grace. Uh, of course, they each had different names, but they were known as Grace. And the three daughters of Zeus would dance naked together. So no, I'm not into having a lap dance by Zeus's three naked dancing daughters. I want nothing to do with Grace. There's a pardon and an acquittal that our king gives to those who will allow the schoolmaster which is the give or take, 613 laws, to guide you to him. In order to do that, you're going to have to keep the Ten Commandments because that's all the schoolmaster does to show you how to get to where you can keep the Ten Commandments. You can't keep the Ten Commandments without doing things of the schoolmaster. You just can't do it. And then when you learn enough about the schoolmaster, then you get turned over to our king. Anyone can get this. Whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, you can have access to the truth. 
But I'll tell you, the 144,000 have already been circumcised or they will be circumcised before our king returns. And I'm going to explain it to you as to why in scripture. Now, as far as for me, uh, now that you understand, you know, on the eighth day you're to be circumcised. And I was born a Catholic. I had two older brothers. They were each done, my mom said, on the third or the fifth or the fifth or the third, you know. But each one had one done differently. And the thing was with me, my mom said they kept trying to circumcise me. And my mom would catch him and say, oh, no, you don't. He has to be circumcised on the eighth day. And they said, well, why? And she said, well, I don't really know why, but I do know he cannot be circumcised on any day but the eighth day. And she went on and on about how, you know, there were a few times where they tried to circumcise me before the eighth day. She says, I had to hide you practically, you know. She says, but you were circumcised, she says, on the eighth day. She says, and Jeffrey, which was the younger brother, she says, I can't even remember the day. She says, I can't remember the other. She says, but you were the eighth day. So therefore, maybe others of the 144,000, my other 143,999 brothers out there, may have been circumcised also on the eighth day, which would be in fulfillment of the law, even though I was a Catholic. My mom, for some reason, and she did get to where she believed in spirits, I'll tell you what, before she did die, uh, went to sleep, where she is yet today. There is no going to heaven when you die or going to hell. Uh, in fact, hell is an old Irish term for, you know, where they would cover up potatoes out in the fields to keep them so that they would stay fresh over the winter and when they wanted potatoes they say hey go to hell and get the potatoes you know and it's just a long history and what hell is and such I'll tell you it's one place you don't want to go near the fires of Gehenna I did endure for 28 hours and they're nothing compared to any any fire any flame you know any kind of blowtorch man can come up with has nothing, nothing on the flames of Gehenna. You know, so whatever the preachers have brought in the past, they're all incorrect. Just like the ones here, she says, that's falling from grace. Well, you know, the preachers fell from the pardon and acquittal. They have no reason for a pardon and acquittal because they never repented of anything. You have to know the laws, that you're breaking laws, in order to repent. <laughs> That's what repentance is. And then when you find out that you're breaking the laws, you don't do it anymore. You quit it. That's what repentance is. And you should be sorrowful that you ever broke a law to begin with. But remember, our king's picking the, sw you know, the swine into his herd, and he's turning us into his sheep. The goats will be on, you know, the left-hand side, the sheep on the right. Think about spiritual marks and such. That's how judgment's going to be. Our king's going to separate, say, hey, you on the right hand, you know, enter into my father's kingdom, and you on my left hand, there's a special place for you. Okay, those that love abortions and eat abortions and all these other things, uh, desire the abortions that are even in the, you know, vaccinations that are coming to, uh, soon to a city near you. But anyway, as stated here, light exposes darkness, commented, are you literally speaking of actual circumcision? I sure hope not. That's falling from Zeus's three naked dancing daughters. Placing the heavy burden and yoke the father couldn't bear. You know, the fathers couldn't bear. No, that, that's not exactly how it should go. Uh, and I do want to show you here. I'll click on to bring her comment up. And realizing the sins they have. It doesn't do nothing. Uh, she had commented down here with Harry and me. But it looks like uh, it's just no longer there. Okay, so it just vanished. 
but light exposes darkness comment and I am literally are you literally speaking of actual circumcision yes I am though you sure hope not and yes I have nothing to do with grace and uh, at one time I did but I repented but anyway let's take a look at what Ezekiel says now here in Ezekiel 39 you can see here that this is you know a time after our king returns that these things are going to take place and it talks about therefore this is Ezekiel 39 1 therefore thou son of man prophesy against Gog and say thus saith uh, Yahweh the Father behold I am against thee O Gog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and I will turn thee back and leave but a sixth part of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and I'll bring up uh, and I'll bring thee upon the mountains of Israel and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel thou and all thy bands and so on and so forth and they're going to fall and you read these things because this here is where we start coming into the inheritance. The next chapter is Ezekiel 40, or Yeketskia 40. And then he talks in the 5 and 20th year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th day, so on and so forth, uh, the hand of Yahweh was upon me and brought me thither. In the visions of Yahweh brought he me into the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain by which was as the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me thither and behold there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass and a line of flax in his hand and measuring reed and he stood at the gate. So he's measuring this temple here that's going to be built okay it isn't yet get to Ezekiel uh, 41 1 afterward he brought me to the temple and measured the post and he goes through all this stuff and measuring of all sorts of things you know and there were narrow windows and palm trees on the one side and on the other and and he's just going on in detail there so you got ski of 42 and it says, Then he brought me forth into the utter court, the way toward the north. And he's speaking of certain things that are taking place in the temple. So we go to Ezekiel 43. He says, Afterward he brought me unto the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the Father of Israel came on the way. Now here I'd like to point out in Ezekiel 43.12. It says, This is the law of the house upon the top of the mountain the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy why behold this is the law of the house okay all these measurements and everything else but it's all part of the ultimate law uh, there's more to the law believe you me than what is even expounded on in the scriptures because once we're given our spiritual bodies there are other laws that we're going to have to maintain with as well to keep self-control and uh, with the power that we're going to be given we could just look at something and it explode it implode it uh, like a million times bigger than you know the uh, the bombs of Nagasaki and Hiroshima you know it's like child play compared to just taking one little rose that pricked your finger and you just <clears throat> I mean it would envelop the entire universe so there's going to be other laws that we're taught these ones are what man can live by that we live under here and that's this law the house that's down here and our king is going to be the one that's actually the high priest over this house. He is called the prince in these scriptures because our king is actually the prince. 
and he is the son of the heavenly father. You know, Yahshua is going to give the crown back to our heavenly father one day, along with all the brothers and sisters, once he gets us cleaned up enough to turn us back over. Yahshua don't want everything. He wants us all to inherit with him, with our father, all things, you know, and there's going to be other laws that we're going to have to submit to as well. What we have right now, the Ten Commandments and the give or take 613 laws, the schoolmaster, that's just a portion. But we can do these things, and by doing so, the best we can to the best of our ability, our Heavenly Father, through His righteous Son, and by Holy Spirit, can tell that we love it enough that we'll be ready to take on these other laws that are going to be also incorporated on us when we're in different bodies. Anyway, uh, he speaks and he says, uh, this is the law of the house upon the top of the mountain. And the top of the mountain here is also the chiefest of the nation or whatever nation that is. This is the top of the nation here that is going to have the law of the house. It's going to be upon the top of that nation. The whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy because we're not going to allow sin to be in there. It says, behold, this is the law of the house. And then he goes on speaking of other things as well. Now, Yahshua is going to be over that house, that temple. And he is right now. Right now, his 144,000 and the children of the earth are actually part of our king's heavenly body, his holy temple in these last days. We're his ambassadors. But anyway... I want to read the entirety of Ezekiel 44, 1 for the most part. Please pay attention to these things. Uh, this is showing that this is for future times. So please keep in mind, if you're rebellious against the law right now, you're, you're not going to like what you see here. And it, it's not going to be pleasant for anybody that chooses to break the laws and commandments and to teach against them. Anyway, Ezekiel 44, 1. Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. So therefore, there is a sanctuary here that is built, and it's built exactly where our king is going to have it built. Ezekiel 44, 2. Then said Yahshua unto me, or you could say Yahweh even, because Yahweh and Yahshua are one. But then saith, uh, Yahweh unto me. Of course, Yahshua hadn't been born yet, okay? But Yahweh and Yahshua became at one. The Father actually dwelt in the Son down here, okay? Two totally different beings, but the Father dwelt in the Son just the same way as the Son and the Father dwell in those who are His, are theirs, <laughs> you know? Even the disciples, when they were alive, were at one with our Heavenly Father through Yahshua and with Yahshua. They were all at one. <laughs> Didn't mean that each and every one of them, disciples, you know, were uh, creators of the heavens and the earth. No, you know, they, they were at one with the one who did create the heavens and the earth, though. And the Father said to me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with your eyes, and hear with your ears all that I say unto you concerning the ordinances of the house of Yahweh and all the laws thereof. And mark well the entering in of the house of Yahweh with every going forth of the sanctuary. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith Yahweh your father, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, 
uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. This is speaking of a time to come. They're bringing in these ones that are uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it. So if you're not circumcised in flesh and you go into the sanctuary, which is why I'm going to tell you, the 144,000 are going to be circumcised. And so is anybody else It comes to the full knowledge of the truth. It wasn't preached to not get circumcised. It was don't get circumcised right away. <laughs> don't get your weenie whack first thing. Whank. Okay, now maybe you can start studying what the law says. Oh, I'm not supposed to eat pork. <laughs> No, oh, I'm not supposed to fornicate. <laughs> well, now you got your weenie whack, so <laughs> you can see those things now, right? Crazy, man. And that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart. Women have to be circumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. Now the law was to be circumcised on the eighth day, and that's where the big controversy came up. You know, it's like, can a man go back to the eighth day in his life to keep that law that says on the eighth day get it? Well, no. But to become like Father Abraham, who got his whack way longer than the eighth day of his life, him and all his household got it whacked. And though they didn't find it a pleasant thing, <laughs> you know, they did it. And it says here, that it says, And that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers. You've done these abominations, uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house. When ye offer my bread and fat and blood, and they have broken my covenant, they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. And ye have not kept my charge and my holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge and my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus saith Yahweh the Father, no stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary so there's not going to be anybody ever that's uncircumcised it's going to be in the very presence of our heavenly father they may be in the presence of our king but they'll never be in the presence of our heavenly father it says right here, Thus saith Yahweh your father. And he's telling, you know, Yeketsky here. He says, No stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel and the Levites that are gone away far from me when Israel went astray which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. And he's talking about, you know, when they went into the promised land, when Moshe was told, hey, these children, when they go in the promised land, they're going to go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of that land, which was the land of the Canaanites. And the Canaanites and the Phoenicians, the Phoenicians and the Canaanites worshiped the same gods of their pantheon. El was the chiefest, and they call him God or gods today, uh, as far as his son Baal is Lord in English. So when you call on Lord, whether it's capital L or all small letters or all large letters, doesn't matter. It's all the same. Baal, that's who you're calling on. And this is what went on 
they went astray. This is what's being spoken of here. And the Levites that are gone away from me, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. And you can even put in there the star of Shamash there, which is the star of David. You know, it has nothing to do. David would have spit on it and, and burned it up. Ezekiel 44, 11. Yet they shall be ministers, who these Levites that went astray, but listen to what they get. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house, and ministering to the house, they shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them because they ministered unto them before their idols, calling on Lord and God, El and Elohim and Baal and, you know, Adonai and all these different names, their idols that they worshipped and brought the children to do so over many generations to right now where you can't even see when you call on God, you're calling on these same ones they was misled to go. After Horan, you know, how blind can you be? Because they ministered unto them before their idols and had caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Iniquity is a fancy word for sin. They fell into sin. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them, saith Yahweh the Father, and they shall bear their iniquity. Now listen to what their iniquity those that led the children astray. It's all part of the plan. Our Father wants none to perish. Those that fell in the wilderness will be in the second resurrection. None of them had Holy Spirit on them. Our Father wants none to perish. They seen what their own way brought them. None, none of the adults that went in, you know, after the Passover out of Egypt survived except for a couple of them because they believed <laughs> with their whole heart and even said hey man yeah those giants out there are pretty big suckers but we could whoop their ass he made it in to the promised land but they all went a whoring after the gods now these ones okay the levites they led them into these things it says here in Ezekiel, it says, And they shall not come near unto me. Think about it, fellas. These individuals are going to acquire salvation. Though they turned everybody, the entire earth, they turned to God worship. That's what they've done. These last days, it's all God worship out there. It's all the chiefest deity in the Canaanite and Pan, uh, the uh, Phoenician pantheons. The chiefest deity is what's worshipped out there in the world today. And our Creator says, And they shall not come near unto me. These ministers that did these things, these Levites, they'll make it. They're going to go through the second resurrection. Those that endure the second resurrection will be these priests that's going to help out in the sanctuary. But the thing is, they shall not come near unto Yahweh to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. But the priests, the Levites, sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me. They're going to see our Father's face. And they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and blood, 
saith Yahweh the Father. That's the reason why there's sacrifices being made. You don't see the spiritual aspect that goes on when the physical sacrifice takes place. Ezekiel 44, 16, They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. Now think about it. You got those that was obedient unto death, and then you had these other ones that even came out from the wilderness, and, and they took on these gods, and they served, and they, they turned the hearts of all these people right up to these last days. Even our king, you know, had to show our Heavenly Father's true name to his disciples there in uh, Yachanan chapter 17. He manifested our Father's name to them. And people have no idea what the 144,000 are for right now, you know. It's like, it's baffling. And I'll have to go out fishing here, you know, after I get done with this video. I go on to 144,000 and I'll look up for videos put up this week and I'll, you know, seek out those that are telling lies about us or whatever. But anyway, those that have sinned against our Father in the past, they'll, a lot of them, now there may be some that are just burned up or whatever, okay, but the majority of them never had an opportunity. Our king was not recognized by any of them. Okay, and the only reason why the high priest spoke out certain things concerning Yahshua was because Holy Spirit was in the high priest to make him speak those things out about Yahshua. But it didn't mean the man had understanding of anything else. There was a donkey once that spoke. But anyway, it talks about here in uh, uh, Ezekiel 44, 15, But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, they kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me. They shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and blood, saith Yahweh the Father." They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, with no wool shall come upon them. So it's speaking of how they're going to be dressed at that time, while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causeth sweat. And when they go forth into the outer court, even unto the utter court to the people, these are circumcised people that's going to see these things. Anyone that's uncircumcised won't even be near the court. They shall put off their garments wherein they ministered and lay the holy chambers, uh, lay them in the holy chambers, and they shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long, which is what uh, one of the disciples were talking about. Nature itself says not for men to have long hair. That was those locks they would grow long, well, they pulled everything else. You know, those things are not to be done. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away, but they shall take maidens of the seed, and so on and so forth. Uh, so anyway, wrapping up here, Ezekiel 44, 27, it says, And in the day that he goeth into the sanctuary, unto the inner court, to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering. His sin offering. This is going to take place in the future. This is going to take place forever. There's always going to be a sin offering. It's talking about our high priest, 
Okay, and it says here, and uh, let's go here to Ezekiel 44, 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane, the holy and the unholy, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. These things are going to be taught here in the future. <laughs> We're already learning it. The 144,000 know exactly what it's speaking of. And we do our best to remain clean. And we teach people, hey, please, you know, don't touch the unclean thing. Our king will receive you if you don't touch the unclean thing. And it says so right here. This is speaking of later days than these right now. It says, any controversy, they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgments. You know, some of the laws are the judgments. And they shall keep my laws. Ooh. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my assemblies, according to these judgments. <laughs> and they shall hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall come at no dead person to defile themselves, and so on and so forth. Please read down these things, and you'll see what it's speaking of. But I do want to reiterate. I do want to reiterate, okay, right here in Ezekiel 44, 9. And, and thus saith Yahweh, no stranger, no stranger. And you would be a stranger if you were not a circumcised male. But it's not something to do until you really desire to enter into the covenant. So you can eat the Passover. You, sh you know, don't rush into it. Make sure this is the right walk for you. Because that circumcision could be known as uncircumcision. You can become uncircumcised spiritually. Thus saith Yahweh the Father, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Now this isn't saying that of my children, the uncircumcised of my children can come before me. No, he's not saying that at all. He's saying if you're not circumcised even in your flesh, you're actually not his son yet. You're not like Father Abraham. If, if you were a Father Abraham, you'd also have your weenie whack, but not the first thing. <laughs> Learn about the laws and the commandments, you know. I mean, it's healthy to have a circumcision to begin with because... When you're uncircumcised, uh, there's even statistics that show that uncircumcised males had acquired STDs more often than those that were uncircumcised, that were circumcised. Okay, so the circumcised males weren't catching, and I think it should have been the other way around, personally. I think if they were circumcised, they should know better than to be out there uh, fornicating and acquiring these sexually uh, derived diseases, transmitted diseases, STDs, you know, I, I, they, the circumcised should get it twice as bad. You know, they should get twice as many herpes and have to wear more makeup to cover it up so they go spread it some more, you know, but... So anyway, my friends, as you see, I'm circumcised. 144,000 will be circumcised. Our king probably already made it in their life, and they may not even realize it, you know. If I didn't know about it right now, uh, because I asked my mother some, oh, 30 years ago, I'm going to say, around 30 years ago, because I was already walking in the faith, and I asked her, you know, Ma, you know, what day was it? Do you remember what day it was when you had me circumcised? Oh, yeah, Alan, let me tell you. And boy, she went on with it. It was a, a joy for her. So I think that most of us, if not all, are already circumcised. And 
those of course that do become of the 144,000 realizing it you know they've already had themselves circumcised to eat Passover they wouldn't miss Passover for the world uh, with that my friends I hope that you enjoyed if you could the truth and the scriptures concerning even the circumcision yes like it says Ezekiel 44 9 Thus saith Yahweh the Father, no stranger uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary. All the other things that you read about the disciples and the day there, it's true. This is what's going to take place here in the future. You're not circumcised. You know, you're going to be just like the Levites that sinned and went a-whoring after the gods. You're going to be on the same level. Except you're not going to be able to get into the sanctuary where at least those sinning and rebellious uh, children that our Heavenly Father kept in charge over the people when they went a-whoring after the gods, just like he said they would, he's going to allow them through the second resurrection to then be ministers in this house. And they'll never see our Father's face. But they'll be in his house. They'll never eat with him. And that's pretty horrible. So think about what's going to take place with those that are uncircumcised. I don't think you'll be there. With that, my friends, I say it's been a marvelous Sabbath so far. Bye.